women are the key. Dare to be a leader. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a vision for excellence and dare to make that particular vision known. Good evening. Good evening. Again, my name is Dr. Ron Archer. I am the founder and chairman of an interesting organization called the Dunamis Institute International, where we try around the world to transform the heads, hearts, hands, habits of humanity in order to change the habitat to have impact for generations. We believe that everything you've gone through in your life is a down payment on your destiny, that nothing is wasted. And we try to teach presidents, I've been an advisor to three U.S. presidents, the how to turn their pain into power, how to turn wounds into wisdom, how to turn scars into stars and stumbling blocks into stepping stones and misery into mission and failure into fortune. The fact remains, everybody has a story to tell. Everybody's been through something. But storms and difficulties and adversity will either make us better or bitter, a winner or a whiner, a climber or a quitter, a contender or a pretender, a winner or a whiner. But we have got the capability today to capture the energy and the drive and the possibility to make great things happen. Now, this is my second trip to Kenya. And I enjoy it. I, I really love this potential and the energy and the pedantic nomenclature and academic jargon, the efficiency of life and the reticular activating system, all the people and what is happening, the collaborative dynamic that is called Kenya. <laughs> it is moving to be here. When I say moving to be here, I'm still... Of all that I've seen, I, I, I have dunamis in Europe, I have dunamis in South America, of course in the United States, but the one thing I can't get my hand around are these effervescent, esoteric drivers of the Matatu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to understand who these guys really are. You know, I have a story about them. There was a pastor who pastored 20,000 people and he had gone on to heaven, and he had a small cottage for his final rest. And he liked his cottage. It was beautiful, was comfortable. But across the river, there was a mansion. And the guy that had the mansion with 17 bedrooms was a matatu driver. And the pastor's kind of confused. He pastored 20,000 people, and he prayed with people, and he served in foreign missions. And yet, the matatu driver has the mansion. So he asked to meet with God to find out, God, why is it, based upon your divine wisdom and serendipitous power, why did you give the Matatu driver a 17-bedroom mansion and I, as your pastor, only have a cottage? And God spoke very clearly. You see, my son, when you were waxing poetic and preaching on Sunday, half the people were sleeping. But when he was driving in Nairobi, everybody was praying. <laughs> everybody was praying. <laughs> I don't improve my prayer life. Bill and Hillary Clinton, the former president and first lady, some may say even the future president of the United States, Miss Hillary Clinton, they were driving to Hope, Arkansas in their limousine for their class reunion. That's pretty nice to go back and you're the president and the first lady. You can't get any higher than that in America. As they're in the limousine coming into the city limits of Hope, Arkansas, Bill looks out his window and he sees a gas station. And he sees this guy that's dirty and full of oil and his clothes are torn and he's pumping gas. And he wipes his eyes and he looks again and he says, Hillary. She said, yes, Bill. Isn't that the guy you almost married before you met me? And she looked out and said, Oh, yeah, that is Henry. My goodness. He said, see, woman, I saved you. <laughs> if you hadn't married me, you'd be married to a gas station pump man. Henry said, no, baby, if I'd married him, he'd be president. You'd be pumping gas. <laughs> the power of women. 